Okay, welcome everyone to our presentation from Zach Wyatt and the Carolina Farm Trust. And uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for the beauty of this day. We thank you for your whole creation and the call to be uh, good stewards and caretakers of this world as we join with all creation in praise and service to you. We thank you for this time together and ask that you would guide this time and inspire us to be your faithful people in the world. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay, Steve. Okay, well, Zach Wyatt in the, that you the, see in the sunglasses there is the CEO and founder of Carolina Farm Trust, which was founded in 2015. Zach, his wife and five kids live in Cornelius and Zach grew up on a 300 acre farm in Northern Virginia, studied undergraduate business, had an early career in, in mortgages and IT, and then decided to, uh, I guess, get back to his roots and founded Carolina Farm Trust. Uh, I think Zach would be the first to tell you that the idea that he has for this um, food and agricultural solution that's place-based, relationship-based, environmentally and economically sustainable. It's not, it's not a new idea, but, it, but it's timely and I think it's bold. It's timely because we saw the pandemic and the long food lines and the vulnerable in our community that are subjected to food insecurity. And we saw empty grocery shelves and it was clear to us that the supply chain supply lines for our food is not necessarily reliable. And we're in the middle of a climate crisis and industrial ag agriculture is not the most environmentally friendly solution. So with all that, you know, shaking all around us back in 2015, ahead of the curve a bit, Zach got Carolina Farm Trust started and I think has a really holistic, systematic way of looking at, at this and I'm glad you guys are here to hear more about it. Zach? Well, thanks, Steve. That was a um, great introduction. Um, you know, and, and to kind of kind of build on what Steve was saying, uh, you know, kind of back in 2015, and I kind of had a career change and was looking kind of what I was going to do with the next step. And, um, you know, I, I kind of got back into ag and started, you know, reading some books and, you know, listening to some TED Talks. And there was just, it was just so bizarre to me on how, you know, everyone in the nonprofit world was trying to tackle this solution either through lawsuits uh, or education. Um, you know, and it's almost kind of irresponsible, in my opinion, to educate a population on something that there's really no system, alternative system that you can really even go to. Uh, you know, I mean, it's really, really challenging to, to actually participate in our local food economy and uh, you really have to work at it. <laughs> um, you know, so. Uh, I want to, again, kind of kind of keep things uh, kind of on a high level and, and would love to engage with you all as much as possible. Uh, but really the kind of the theme of what we're trying to accomplish is, you know, we have very large system issues uh, and we need a system solution. Uh, and I think the biggest challenge uh, with that is to really, you know, from, uh, you know, funding community and, and, and buy-in is, uh, you know, system change is really hard. Uh, it's really expensive. It's, it's uh, you know, you're not going to get, uh, you know, your boxes checked in six months or a year. Um, you know, it really does take, you know, some some big vision and big leadership to, uh, you know, go down the road of system change. Uh, and it's just been very interesting over the last, you know, couple of years of, you know, really kind of getting more into the corporate world and foundational world and, and just how challenging, you know, hearing we're all about system change. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, we're still at this point where I think people are still scared of it. Um, you know, so what we've tried to do with Carolina Farm Trust and what I've really learned over the last, you know, especially the last three, three and a half years of just how ingrained, you know, health and nutrition, climate change, uh, upward mobility, uh, the racial injustices and equities are all really rooted in our culture. Um, I mean, you can have a kid uh, that's going to the best school on the planet with everything, with the best IT, best teachers. Uh, but if that kid is not going to school nutritionally whole, there's no point. 
Um, I mean, there's, there's just, there's just such a critical uh, aspect of just food that we just have this interaction, uh, you know, every day with that we really have kind of lost, I think, the importance of it, you know, where our food comes from, who grows it, um, you know, so that's really what we're trying to do from a Carolina Farm Trust, Trust perspective, is how to re rebuild regional food systems from production to consumption. Uh, so it's about working with a small farming community, getting them what they need to be successful from, is, it is it infrastructure, it is equipment, is it marketing, uh, you know, what are the roles and distribution that we have to play in? Uh, so the farmers are getting the margin they need on a wholesale level, uh, while at the same time, you know, letting the large part of the, large part of the percentage of the population actually able to support local ag. Uh, you know, so it's really about building this food economy uh, going up. So I'll leave it there. I know that's a lot to unpack, but, uh, you know, would love to kind of get your thoughts and kind of steer, we can kind of steer the conversation from there, if that's okay. What Zach has put together is a, a network of existing small farms and new plots of land that are in a region that expand, it goes from Union County to Iredale County. He lives in Cornelius, as you remember, and there's a new farm in Huntersville that's just underway called Free Spirit Farm, but it, it's not these isolated siloed solutions. It's connected in network to an existing farm that's in um, Aldersgate down in Charlotte, and he has relationships with farmers that farm in Statesville, farm down in Union County, and, and he's putting together a distribution network to connect all that. He's talking with the town here in Davidson. So it's, there's a lot going on right now, but it's networked urban and suburban farming um, that's coupled with uh, the distribution that that requires that connects all those dots of small farms around our region. So that's kind of the big picture. And um, so for you to see that, I think it's important, um, but before you ask questions and but jump in. Yeah, just to give everyone a, a quick background. So we have, um, we have four, uh, four parcels that we kind of have under our management, two of them that we're uh, managing underneath our umbrella and the other two um, we're working with community, other farms uh, on it as well. I mean, one major issue with new and upcoming farms is land access. It's a, it's a huge, huge, huge issue. And uh, we're really proud to be able to uh, work in that space as well. So we have 11 acres in Union County, just east of Mint Hill that Nebedi Farms is on. Uh, and Crown Town Compost is also, um, you know, uh, dropping their food waste and creating compost out there. Uh, we have six and a half acres at the urban farm at Aldersgate in East Charlotte. Uh, Free Spirit Farm is a, something we just broke ground on uh, uh, last month. Uh, and then we have two acres in Statesville uh, that we have Jenko Community Farms um, is managing, you know, so it's, it's, uh, you know, we're really trying to position, uh, you know, our mission for as many organizations that can and will want to participate, um, you know, because none of us can do all this work on our own. Um, you know, so here's, uh, you know, kind of free spirits. And this is kind of just a um, a little two, two acre plot that's right here. You see kind of the, we've gotten all the wood off this uh, area. Uh, the owners of the property uh, had it logged about two years ago. So all the stumps were remaining, uh, you know, so in April, March, April, we got all that, all that out. And I don't know if you can kind of see in the way background, there's a, <laughs> there's a pile about three times the height of me and uh, probably a football field long. Uh, just full of stumps, uh, but we got all the small wood debris out. And then we have um, uh, a good friend of ours, Taylor Overcash from Concord is coming out tomorrow to kind of disc this up uh, and do some grading for it. So we can actually get this little piece, uh, something planted here shortly. Um, you know, but if you just look at the, the scope of kind of back here and, you know, the, the property kind of goes all the way to the tree line, uh, you know, all the way to the cross. And it's just how cool is this just kind of in the, in the backyard of kind of the North Met corridor? Um, you know, and to Steve's point, um, you know, we're going to use this property as kind of a hub spoke type of system. Um, if you kind of look through the trees there, we're going to, that's where we're going to put all of our public facing, uh, you know, buildings, farm stands, event space, uh, you know, multi-purpose, you know, do we put a health clinic out here? Do we put a preschool out here, 
um, you know, really looking at how to integrate um, as much as we can, you know, kind of on this urban farm setting with the amount of acreage we have out here. Uh, you know, so uh, like, as, like Steve said, as far as uh, we're talking with the town about 10 acres in Fisher Park. Um, so as we kind of build this up, all the equipment, all our farm team can manage this and then we can take them to uh, Fisher Park and they can manage that um, and really start to, um, you know, really cultivate some uh, urban farming in the North Met corridor, uh, you know, with, with Huntersville, uh, Cornelius and Davidson. Is there, does anybody have any questions? That location, guys, is right across the street from Huntington Green, a Latinx community in Huntersville. It's essentially a stone's throw away. Zach's team has met with the community there in a community engagement project. Uh, you know, from a DCPC's perspective, in terms of you know equity and racial equity, that's a pillar of what um, Carolina Farm Trust is all about. And they've got some of the excitement and feedback from the families that live in Huntington Green and taking that into account with what might be even grown on that land that's uh, customized really hyper locally to um, the communities in that area. So, and the owners of that land are from India. And so they're eager to grow something that would make Indian food. So it's, this isn't your sort of corn squash and beans uh, <laughs> kind of approach to farming. It's, it's, um, got some degree of localized community input and connection here that I think is gonna make it a meaningful contribution to our area in terms of food and agriculture. And we're also designing a, uh, a farm apprentice program uh, right now that will be accredited, will be accredited by the state. Uh, and then all of our classroom, uh, uh, all the classroom portions will be in connection with CPCC. Uh, so when, when folks go through that, they will, uh, you know, potentially get their associate's degree uh, and then actually get their journey certificate uh, at the end of it. Um, you know, so we're, we're really excited about that. Accenture uh, uh, gave us a grant to get all that done. And, um, you know, the average age of a farmer, a lot of people don't really realize is about 60 years old, um, you know, and it is almost impossible uh, if you want to kind of get into local ag, small ag, uh, if you weren't really born into it, unless you have a, a crap ton of money. <laughs> um, you know, so we're hoping, uh, you know, we've, I mean, I get emails all the time about people having interest to get back in it, uh, you know, but we have to pay living wages and, um, you know, and, and have, uh, uh, you know, have a career path for folks that are going into these amazing schools. I mean, Warren Wilson out in Asheville, uh, Furman, Clemson, North Carolina A&T, um, you know, you know, the only ag jobs really out there is in, in, is in the industrial ag complex. Uh, you know, so how do we create a career path for local ag? And, and uh, you know, that's a big part of what we do as well. Zach, do you have any support from ag extension? Um, you know, they're pretty difficult. Um, I mean, they are very, I mean, you know, they're all tied in real heavy with NC State. And, uh, you know, there's so much politics around, uh, you know, local ag versus you know, industrial ag and, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I don't want to really speak out of turn, but, uh, you know, uh, not really. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, but, the, the, but there's a lot of the, the ag extensions are great people. I, you know, I, I you know, Steve, uh, Steve is the one that's here in Charlotte and, you know, uh, we've had, you know, conversations here and there, um, but, you know, they're more focused on kind of bigger, bigger things. Zach's got plans for bunk houses there. So if you're going to deal with workforce, then you've got to deal with workforce mm -hmm. housing. And we know that you can't just, you know, we know there's a problem with affordable and attainable housing and where your farm apprentice is going to live while they're being farm apprentices in somewhere that's affordable. So you actually have to think about those kind of things that, that more holistically, again, to come up with solutions that work. The um, just, y'all might know, the Smithfield Community Association has approached the Carolina Farm Trust because there's a dormant farm still that they're thinking about revitalizing for, for that community as well to be able to be another spoke to, to connect into free spirit. And neighbors of ours in West Davidson have been contacting us about how to get connected in and reinvigorate some of their backyard space that used to be very uh, verdant and productive and has gone dormant there on that side of town as well. 
I, I just think it's extremely timely for all the things we're thinking about in terms of racial equity, affordable housing, as well as food insecurity. Can you talk more about the coordination between these various farms that are up and running and what the end game is? Is there gonna be um, people selling their, how is all that gonna work? Are they gonna sell their crops or are they going, how are they going to um, deliver crops to the communities? Is that gonna be available, how? So here on, uh, you know, on all of our urban farm sites, we're going to have, uh, you know, farm stands that are on site uh, that, um, you know, that we want people to come to, um, you know, this particular site will have, I mean, almost three acres of, of kind of public, some sort of public facing programming. Uh, you know, if the, if the urban farm in Fisher Park, you know, we'll have a farm stand there. We have the farm stand at the urban farm at Aldersgate. Hmm. Um, Janko Community Farms up in Statesville actually have a little mobile market that they do. Uh, so they go down and serve the South Statesville community uh, as well as come into Charlotte. Um, you know, and they just kind of do some mobile markets kind of all around Charlotte. Uh, and uh, the distribution center that we're trying to, you know, that there's a distribution center vision that we've, we've designed and, uh, and thankfully got a really cool opportunity on one in West Charlotte. Uh, so if we're able to kind of put all that together, uh, we'll have, you know, a 20,000 square foot uh, distribution platform, you know, to really go out and support all of our farming community with guaranteed contracts, uh, you know, and, and buying directly from them, getting into that distribution center and then having a wholesale and then a direct retail outlet out of that. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's very focused on economics. Uh, you know, it, you know, the food aspect is extremely important, uh, you know, but where we're trying to play is, is you know, because the infrastructure is, is the hardest part in this whole thing. Uh, and we basically have ignored it for, you know, since the 40s, pretty much. Uh, and it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. Uh, and so if we have the, you know, the distribution center and, you know, production facilities, uh, it'll make life a whole lot easier on, you know, organizations like Ada Jenkins and Angels and Sparrows and Camino, Greer Heights, uh, Latin America Coalition, Project 658, West Boulevard Neighborhood Coalition, Historic West End. Uh, you know, there's just so much need, you know, on these on the ground organizations. And what we're trying to do is figuring out a consumer generated revenue model uh, that is going, con to, going to consistent, consistently meet that social capital need. Um, you know, because right now, you know, and in for years and years and years, we just keep failing at that because there's these one time money dumps and it's gone, you know, as fast as it hits the account. Um, you know, but the needs continue to grow. Uh, I mean, one clear example is, is we got $50,000 uh, from some COVID funding last year. You know, uh, we went and spent it all in two weeks and gave it and gave awesome, you know, fruits and vegetables that were grown, you know, that picked that day and, and chicken and pork and beef. And uh, we got it out to about 10 or 12 different on the ground organizations. And then and two weeks later, you know, my phone wouldn't stop ringing because they were wanting more. Um, you know, so the what's important to me, especially, you know, I mean, just really addressing this caste system of food distribution that we have with the food banks and, um, you know, how how do we develop a model where, you know, the person who's working on the 52nd floor in Bank of America building is getting the same food as someone over off of West Boulevard? Um, I mean, that's just, uh, you know, something that's, uh, you know, really important to me and, um, and we can do it. I mean, that's the thing, um, you know, and we're, but we just have to build the infrastructure to, to do it. And so it makes it easier for the all on the ground organizations to really flourish if we can kind of get this infrastructure built. Thank you. Do you have a particular time frame or hope or for the, for the vision of, of um, the infrastructure piece? And, and um, so that's, that's kind of one piece. And then secondly, how do you envision uh, community members like us being a part of the work that you're doing? Um, I mean, as far as timelines, it's all funding dependent. Uh, you know, we can move really fast if we have the funds to go do it. Uh, then the, the only timeline I have to wait on is permitting. <laughs> um, you know, so, um, I mean, we're, 
we're wanting to move as fast as we possibly can. And, and we've been doing that and, uh, you know, we keep pushing forward and, uh, I feel like the momentum is really starting to build, which is really cool. Um, you know, and as far as, you know, like organizations like yourself, I mean, I, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, kind of put that back on to, to you guys on, you know, how you guys want to have a relationship. Um, I mean, we're very open, we're very transparent. Um, you know, it, it depends on, you know, just a lot of factors of kind of where the interest level really lies, uh, you know, and, in, 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 uh, you know, from that, you know, and so if you guys let me know how you want to participate, we can certainly plug you in, um, you know, but it's, it's, um, it just depends on where your, where your appetite is. Uh, I mean, right now we're, you know, Steve and I were just in a meeting with some institutional uh, groups on Friday. Uh, you know, and it's just, uh, you know, uh, cause what we're doing. Yeah. I mean, I would hundred percent agree. It's very risky. Um, you know, and so, uh, uh, there's folks that need you to get to a certain point before they really want to engage. Um, you know, and I totally understand that, uh, you know, that part, um, you know, so the vision that we're, I mean, where we're at right now is really looking for, uh, you know, some visionary leaders that kind of really see what we're doing. Uh, and really could help us move forward, um, you know, kind of just keep, you know, keep things in, into production and keep furthering everything out. There have been some misses of farmland that's been lost up here and, and gotten developed, and there's still some fairly large tracts of land that, because of the escalating property costs, that upfront capital expense to get in here is a big dollar proposition. Um, Behind you, Dave, down uh, in behind antiquity, um, Zach was saying there's 400 and something acres that, you know, could very well end up being developed residentially or business wise. But, uh, you know, it'd be great if that got converted into something that was local food and agriculture, if possible. It's just those entry costs to land once it's escalated are pretty high. And um, that that's probably the the biggest problem. But. Robert, to your point, we're doing stuff in Davidson that has a bit of a, a bite that's small enough for a group that's interested in this to chew on. Um, outside the church, the Eco Davidson group is going to try to do something a little Davidson centric that ho hooks up with the bigger idea. Um, and so those traction points are going to become more apparent as we uh, move along, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, just in Mecklenburg County in general, we are just so lucky to have the farmland that still exists in the population centers, the density that we have, especially in the North Met corridor. And, you know, I mean, I'm always going to, my heart is always going to break over missing out on uh, the Alexander farm property. Um, you know, but we have, you know, Danny Phillips farms for sale, all of 73 going East is for sale. Um, I mean, it seems like everything's for sale, but uh, you know, but uh, that's, it's a Steve's point. Uh, I mean, I'm wanting to get Free Spirit up and running. I want to get Fisher Park up in the partnership with uh, uh, Smithville uh, so we can really showcase the North Met corridor and how important that 400 and some odd acres is going to be, um, you know, behind antiquity. And really just, I mean, how awesome would it be if we're actually feeding ourselves, you know, uh, within 15, 20 miles of each other? I mean, that's, you know, that's really what we're talking about. Um, you know, and I know, you know, a lot of people have a hard time kind of wrapping their head around food systems and, you know, why is it important local versus California? Um, you know, but I mean, the Midwest is, uh, you know, a gigantic drought. I mean, I have really, I mean, there's a guy in Hickory that I'm really close to and he's on a kind of on national tours of just how low the water tables are. Um, you know, there's really not enough regenerative farming going on in the Midwest or California to really kind of combat uh, you know, these, you know, 60 years of, you know, pretty much fertilizer and poison that we've been kind of putting out there. Um, you know, so I think it, it's much more than just sign of, uh, oh, let's go support local. Uh, you know, in my opinion, it is a, you know, it's a risk management problem uh, that needs a risk management solution. And the thing is, we have it it's right here. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm standing, I don't, maybe 10 miles from where you guys are, right, uh, where you guys are. Um, you know, and you can produce a lot of food on 28 acres. Um, you know, so it, the opportunity is here. We just got to seize it. So, so what's, what's the, uh, the size of the property you're on now? Is it, is uh, 28 acres. Okay. 
And how much of that is the guy going to come and disc up tomorrow? Two. Gotcha. Um, and so More like three. <laughs> is, uh, is, so I guess I'm, I don't know why I'm struggling, but if you could just walk me through the steps of you're, you're just beginning with this. Is it, did you say free spirit? Is that right? Yeah, this parcel is called Free Spirit Farm. Yeah. You're just beginning with Free Spirit Farms and walk me through the process from land acquisition to um, food on somebody's table and and how much resource sharing is there between all your different, what are you calling them, spokes? Uh, it's kind of an urban farm network. Network, uh, yeah. yeah. So are you all sharing resources in these different... Mm -hmm farms and so you've got somebody up in one area in statesville that's using your equipment and then there's going to be be able to be used somewhere else in another farm yeah so uh so like bernard singleton uh who does nebadai farms you know he was trying to farm over there with a lawnmower and so uh we were lucky to get us a grant and we went and put a down payment on a john deere tractor with the front end loader a backhoe um, you know, a few implements and it really kind of transformed what he was able to do. Uh, but it's also, uh, you know, other farms have used it. We use it at the urban farm at Aldersgate. Um, you know, Deep Root CPS is who, who we work with to kind of manage uh, the urban farm at Aldersgate and they're helping us build out Free Spirit. Um, you know, so they've used it. Uh, we have some other, uh, you know, smaller pieces of equipment uh, like walk behind tractors with tillers and, and different things that uh, we let other farms use. Um, you know, so from a timeline standpoint, uh, we had a media piece done kind of mid 2019 uh, and the owners of Free Spirit reached out and said, you know, they had this and would be interested in, in, in turning this into a farm. And I said, yes. Uh, cool. You know, so we worked, we kind of chatted back and forth for a couple of months and, um, you know, signed the lease in December, uh, and then obviously COVID hit, uh, you know, so we were kind of um, retooling a little bit, um, but the biggest issue with this piece of property was it was full of stumps, um, you know, and most of the uh, quotes I was getting was 100, 125 grand uh, to get rid of them, uh, you know, so finally I found someone who was willing to do us a favor, and they came in and did it for 50, uh, and so that's kind of, that just happened. And, you know, so, uh, right now we're just clearing this little spot of all the smaller wood debris that the excavators couldn't get. Uh, so we're going to get this plot as, as well, as much as we can. And hopefully we'll have some summer stuff and fall stuff kind of growing in here. Uh, but in the meantime, I mean, I'm meeting the electrician tomorrow to work about getting power. Uh, and then I got to work on getting a well, um, you know, and then we're going to, we're having a volunteer day on Saturday to really walk the rest of the property to start getting all these, all the smaller wood pieces, uh, you know, into piles, getting them burned. Uh, and then we'll have the uh, bigger tractors come in and disc the whole thing, which will, which will bring more wood back up to the surface. And then once we get that cleared, uh, then we'll do a little bit of grading, um, you know, uh, the, based on the topography of the land, there's kind of a little creek that kind of runs right down in the center. Uh, you know, and so at that point, exactly. then it'll be just funding to get it continued built out, you know, and then across the way there of actually getting all the buildings done. Zach, we lost your video. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm losing battery. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> and can I ask a question, Zach, about the farm team? You mentioned um, a few times the concept of a farm team. Yes, what, sir. Who's going to be on that farm team? Is, are those employees? Are those volunteers? Is that so, the farm stand or is that growing the crops or what? Yeah, so we work with, uh, you know, Deep Root CPS, which is another organ for-profit organization that Wisdom and Shreej is our own. They have their own homestead kind of in the northwest of Charlotte. Um, you know, so we've been working with them for the past kind of year, year and a half. Uh, and it's been great because we've been able to uh, give them an opportunity to kind of grow the business that they've wanted to do. They come with a, a lot of great expertise. I mean, wisdom is phenomenal from a farming standpoint and Cherie is an urban planner by profession. Um, you know, so it was been really able for them uh, to kind of build their team, how they're wanting to grow and expand their business um, through our projects. Uh, and then through the farm apprentice program, once that gets off the ground, we'll start hiring them and then wisdom will, and his team will train those. Uh, and then we'll slowly backfill those positions 
And then Deep Roots will gonna continue moving with us on new projects. Um, you know, so the hardest part of farming is getting them all set up. Uh, you know, so that's what Wisdom and Cherie's expertise is in. Uh, you know, so as we, as they, they'll, we will continue to work with them on all of our new projects and then slowly backfill with homegrown talent uh, on the existing ones. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. There's another aspect of food insecurity. I guess it's food resilience. And so not everything is growing all year long. So sometimes the shelves get empty because it's in the middle of winter and in the middle of winter with COVID and empty grocery shelves, food resilience, food security is worsened. So there, there is uh, in the plans also a series of, of a network of kitchens because I have buddies in the food truck business. There's no commercial kitchens up where we live. They have to go over to university um, air, city area to get their food truck stocked. So you, you need to be able to get prepared food that might have a shelf life um, Carolina Farm Trust already has like soups in that form. And that's why this is so holistic because you have to be thinking about so many different pieces and parts to it, not full, all year round and not just, you know, in the, in the growing season. So it's, um, it, that's why to me, it's bold idea to take on that big of a system solution. Oh, I was gonna ask about, um relative to food resilience, is there any kind of like training women for canning and freezing or it doesn't have to be women, but that's traditionally a role that women have done um, that sometimes people don't have any training on. Um, but I know that, you know, there's co-ops and things like that that used to be for dealing with food like that so that you could carry over through the mission. Yeah. yeah, so part of the, uh, the dis dis distribution center that we're gonna have, we're gonna put a big, that we're gonna be putting a pretty expansive commercial kitchen uh, in it uh, to do things like that. Uh, we're also having, you know, very early preliminary conversations with Ada Jenkins to kind of get their kitchen uh, back up and running, uh, their commercial one. Um, you know, so yes, that's all part of, uh, you know, the plan as, as things develop. Right. I have a cousin that um, is farm doing a community farm with the Lutheran Church in Troutman. Um, do you all connect with things like that or with our little community garden over here or is that? Um, <laughs> um, I mean, you know, community gardens, you know, typically, I mean, they are, uh, I mean, you know, if, if someone were to reach out and want some help, we would certainly see what we could do. Um, but community gardens aren't really a focus of ours. Okay. And tell us, I remember reading this story in the paper, but I can't put it right together, but there's an Indian family. Yes. Sri and Nilu Brigapelli. Yeah. They have, uh, they, so they, they've owned this property for a long time. Uh, they both, uh, Sri and Nilo, both, I think, have very strong agricultural, uh, you know, kind of heritage back into India. Uh, you know, so they were, um, you know, so they, they're, I mean, they're excited. I mean, Sri texts me at least once a week, you know, on updates and, you know, things of that nature. So, uh, but they've been great to, to work with and excited to, I think they're very excited to see what this can become. So is the, is it ac is the land basically in a, are you borrowing the land? Is it in a land lease agreement? Did they donate it to the trust? How does that work exactly? So we're in a long-term lease, a 10 year lease, um, you know, and we've already uh, talked back and forth that that will get extended. Uh, long-term goal, we're hoping to purchase the property once she's, um, you know, ready to sell and if and when he's ready to sell. Um, so it's, it's not, uh, you know, obviously we would love to have the resources to buy everything immediately, uh, you know, but, um, you know, with the, with what all of it costs, uh, we, you know, we, we just have to take the necessary risks, um, you know, on these types of leases, but, um, but uh, I think it's relatively safe and, you know, we've, I always have the real hard, uncomfortable conversations up front. Uh, so, 
but it, is that a possible model where somebody doesn't want to sell, but they're willing for you to use their land? Yep, that's pretty much everything we have is under leases. So the, the Union County is with a private individual, uh, Free Spirits with a private individual, and then Aldersgate is with Aldersgate Retirement Community, and then the state's full properties with Iredell Christian Ministries. Okay. So the other, the other, the nonprofits, you know, th those are no, th those are no brainers. It's a dollar a year and they'll get renewed forever. And, and what kind of, uh, what kind of financial resources are needed to, to get like the three acres you're looking at now to production stage? Um, well, just the three acres right now, I mean, we're probably, I mean, the infrastructure, like I said, is really expensive. I mean, the equipment that we're wanting to get is, uh, with the tractor and about four or five implements is about, about $60,000. Um, the electric getting that in here is going to be about four grand. Uh, the well is going to be 12 to 15, uh, you know, try getting the, the walk-in coolers is five, um, you know, uh, you know, so, uh, uh, so yeah, I mean, that, that those, all those infrastructure costs is, is just what's the bear, what it's just hard to get, um, you know, up front. but those are all one-time costs. Um, right. and that's kind of the cool part, especially like with what we're doing here in the North Bay corridor, you know, is all that equipment. I, we can just, you know, get the truck, uh, get a trailer and we can just drive it up to Fisher park, for example. Um, you know, so we don't need, you know, three different tractors at three different sites. Um, you know, and that way we can have like the greenhouses here, for example, and then we can just kind of maximize the growing space, you know, at other parcels that are close by, um, cause we can do all the starters and everything else, um, here. What other questions do folks have? Are you working with any of the colleges that have business majors that might be helpful to doing a um yeah i mean i think once we get i mean I, we have uh, an intern from uncc right now uh daniela cordella uh she is awesome and, and does a lot of our email marketing and um and uh I, we actually have an interview with eli from the uncc urban institute on thursday uh you know so we're as we grow uh we definitely want to have a strong presence in um, the agricultural schools, uh, obviously, as well as UNCC, um, you know, for people who are interested in that. And an internship, is that a volunteer thing or is it No, uh, it's, it's paid. What, what kind of pay? <laughs> $15 an hour. So an hourly wage, okay. Yeah. So back, back to, you, you said the current plot there at, at um, Free Spirit Farm, you are hopeful that you will have something being grown there by the fall? Is that, did yeah, I yeah, we're working, we're working hard to get this space in at least some stuff in the ground, hopefully in early June. And so what, um, what kind of, uh, um, uh, what kind how many people are involved in, in, um, uh, you know, the, the preparation and the planting and the harvesting and that kind of thing? Uh, I mean, wisdom and Sharice team's about four people. Okay. Um, but we've, uh, I mean, the Huntington green community really wants to kind of, uh, I really hate having to rely on volunteers at all. Yeah. Um, I mean, we love to have them, obviously, but we never want to rely on them for anything that's critical or crucial to the, to the model. Sure. Um, you know, but we'll, we'll have to kind of, uh, you know, uh, needle that, you know, thread that needle, uh, you know, kind of this year as, as things continue to grow, um, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, but again, I mean, when you know what you're doing, it, it's, it's a huge help and, uh, you know, and that's kind of where from our organization, you know, wisdom handles all the farm stuff, you know, so I don't have to, uh, you know, so, you know, I'm still a hundred percent focused on kind of this, you know, kind of building the system solution, uh, you know, and we hire the experts underneath of us to focus on the ground. Do you know yet what you're going to be planting? I'm not sure. I got a, um, 
they, I don't think they've made those decisions yet. Okay. I've been watching this little video of the need to grow. Oh. <laughs> Have you seen that? <laughs> is that lettuce grow or is, is that no, something no, different? It's, it's a video put out by uh, Interfaith Power and Light, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, that might be something that, anyway, it's got all sorts of awards as an independent, save the soil, save the world. Yeah, I think that's a, yeah. I mean, I think that, I think that's a movie around soil health and, yeah. um, you know, and soil health is everything. Uh, I think I don't, a lot of people don't really understand that after World War II, uh, you know, basically the, the industries at the time were like, well, what the hell are we gonna do with all this fertilizer? Uh, you know, and what are we going to do with all this poison gas? Uh, and so that is how, uh, you know, the pesticide industry started and that's how the fertilizer industry started. Uh, you know, so, um, you know, the nutritional value pretty much at the grocery store from anything is about 60% less uh, than it was, uh, you know, back in the early part of the 1900s. Uh, and, you know, they, they're just putting just so much artificial inputs just to get stuff to grow. Um, you know, and I think, I mean, regenerative farming is starting to catch on, um, you know, but that's another thing as we continue to grow, you know, we want to go uh, and really sit down with, you know, the commodity farmers who are, who are typically very conservative, uh, you know, don't like a lot of change, um, you know, but how can we financially incentivize them to, you know, rethink how they're, how they're growing because the, the subsidy system, uh, you know, our whole, I mean, the industrial food complex as a whole is just, uh, you know, in my, you know, uh, very limited opinion on it, uh, there's an expiration date, you know, in what I see. Is there uh, any kind of video that you all have presentation? That yes, um, we have a great video that I could share with, uh, um, I think Steve has it, but uh, I can share it with everyone. Uh, and it kind of gives a kind of a real uh, overlay of everything that we're doing. Great, great. That'd be great to, uh, is that like uh, by link or? Yes. Okay. Then uh, when we uh, when we share the this um, recorded Zoom call, we can include that link for more information perhaps. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll, I'll send it to you uh, when we get off the phone. Okay, thank you. So if folks wanted to come out and learn more in person, is that a possibility or is that just taking- Absolutely. And you don't have? <laughs> nope, I love doing it. Yeah, I love getting people out and uh, it starts to make sense once you can kind of put your feet on the ground and, and really see it. Um, I mean, the screen really doesn't give it justice. And when you kind of get into the center of this property in itself, you like, you, you realize how, it's, how big it is. <laughs> so you said that place is going to be kind of the hub. Uh, that's your... For the North, for the North Beck corridor, yes. For the North Mech corridor, okay. And uh, so will you, um, so currently, where do you operate from? Uh, I live in Cornelia, so we, I mean, our, our, you just work our out address, of your house or? yeah, yep. Okay, gotcha. What other questions do folks have? We've had a few people join us as the call has gone on. Welcome. Glad you're here. I, I'm sorry. Um, we've had problems here technology problems here at the Pines. And uh, so I have missed the beginning of this wonderful presentation. Well, um, so we'll would, you say, would you say the uh, bottom line is that you would like money? <laughs> well, I promised Steve that I was never, I wasn't gonna utter those words. <laughs> I, I think most nonprofits put money number one. <laughs> Ooh, uh, It'd be fun to organize a trip, you know, a site visit. And yeah, take a little, take a little. Uh, out there. Yeah, we would love to do that. I mean, we did that uh, with a field trip on Sunday and literally um, a field trip. 
Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I don't know if, if um, I'm, I'm sure that you try to make connections and get things for less any way you can, but um, I don't know. I can't remember the organization uh, that Margaret Martins works for that did, helps pr provide dig wells all over the country, but I don't, I don't know if she does stuff other than for residential, but um, I'm going to see, I'm going to have that conversation and maybe connect the two of you. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, uh, Mecklenburg County Soil and Water has a great program, but we have to be, we have to have our fire number for a year. Um, you know, so we, they did a cost share for the well that we're putting in at the urban farm at Aldersgate. Um, oh, so we'll, we'll, we're going to have to have multiple wells out here. So uh, okay. we'll, we'll have to probably pay the full retail cost on the first one. Uh -huh. um, you know, but we'll we'll get help on the ones after. Okay. Super. Well, well I would love to, uh, you know, if you, I mean, I, I don't really, I keep everything, I don't plan anything too far out, uh, you know, but if you guys would like to come out, um, we can, you know, if, depending on how much time you guys want to dedicate, I can, we can show you free spirit. We can show you the urban farm at Aldersgate. And then I would love to take you down to, uh, the Union County site uh, with where Nebadai is and you can just see a lot of different ag phases of, of different where everybody is um, you know and you guys I think will get a kick out of meeting Bernard uh, he has a great Moringa project that he's trying to get off the ground and um, you know I, and it really puts together just kind of that system we've been kind of talking about this evening. What is Moringa? It is a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a big superfood. If you Google it, you can find tons of information on it. Uh, but it's typically grown in India and Africa. Uh, and there's a huge demand here in the U.S. for American grown Moringa. Uh, and Bernard is a certified grower. Uh, but it's, it's a dried, you, it's, you can be used as a spice. It's can be tea, um, you know, but a lot of people use it in, uh, you know, Indian Africa because it, It'll keep kids and if you're sick, uh, it has just a ton of nutrition um, when people don't have a lot of nutrition available to them. So the people that are into it are like really into it. <laughs> we could learn something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have, well, buddy, my, I have a buddy who's a farmer in Tanzania. And so I, it was like uh, Dustin Hoffman in The Graduate when the guy said plastics, but I said Moringa to my <laughs> friend in Tanzania to see if he would uh, start maybe growing it since it's so hot. Mm -hmm. Hot commodity. Yep. Well, well, I'm about to lose you guys. Um, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you all and I'll get you that video, Robert, and I would love to host um, you know, host you guys out uh, whenever you guys would like to get together. Thank you, Zach. And thank you for taking time to be with us and share with us about the Carolina Farm Trust. And we wish you well, and we hope to be able to be uh, somewhat involved and share more about uh, what you're doing with the rest of our congregation. So awesome. Robert, thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. And everyone who attended, thank you so much. Everybody have a, a great you. night. Take care be with you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye.